Hello and welcome to the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you could join us uh, for a half an hour of vivacious and interesting conversation on all sorts of uh, uh, issues that are of interest to our local community. Joining me today is uh, State Senator, former State Senator Cal Potter, Professor Tom Paneski, a mystery guest who will <laughs> sign in later, Ta uh, Ken. Ken Risto, I, I remember the name now, who's a social studies teacher. My name is Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm a lawyer in town. Our special guest, this bright, shining face here, is Scott Muleff. And uh, Scott is wearing a, a wonderful button that says Save Access Wisconsin. And we've asked Scott to join us here today to talk a little bit about something that is near and dear to all of our hearts, which is local programming, local cable TV, which allows the Donahue Group to shine forth what, 45 times a month <laughs> or, or thereabouts. Um, local uh, access uh, TV, which uh, some of you may know, some of you may not know, is in significant danger. And Scott is the, um, what is your exact title here? It's, I'm the production coordinator at TVA. And so that's a simpler title than, say, Ken Risto's title. So, and it uh, doesn't change as often. And it doesn't change as often. <laughs> for that, you should be grateful. One episode, one title. <laughs> there you go. Scott, you're probably you're also on the state board for cable access, aren't you? That's right. I, I'm also on the board of directors for the WAPC. It's the Wisconsin Association of PEG Channels. PEG. Tell us what PEG is. Acronym within an acronym. PEG is uh, Public Education and Government. It's the three legs of community access right. uh, television. First of all, tell us just a little bit about what, what you mean, what we all mean about community access and uh, uh, how, it, how it shows itself here in the Sheboygan community. Okay. Um, I'll speak specifically about Sheboygan, um, although there are similar um, setups in, in communities all across the state and the nation for that matter. Um, TV8, which is what we're on right now in Sheboygan, is sort of a, a twofold. It's public and government access. Uh, we also have several educational access channels um, in Sheboygan. Channel 20, the Sheboygan Area School District channel. Um, Channel 15, the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan channel, and uh, also Channel 25 on uh, the charter lineup is uh, LTC's channel, which would be considered educational access as well. Where does the county board come across? To what? Um, the county board is seen on, on Channel 8. Here's the, um, the county board and um, city council meetings, um, and for that matter, uh, Committee of the Whole, are, are covered by, by TV8. Um, Channel 20 carries the, the school board meetings. So those are exciting nights well, <laughs> and it, afternoons it's the, in Sheboygan. The only um, you know, full coverage of local government. I mean, you'll get highlights in the newspaper or some sound bites on the radio from the, the meeting, but you know, for full gavel to gavel coverage of any of those local meetings, unless you're able to attend the meeting in person, the you know, local cable is the only way, the local access channels are the only way to, uh, to see those. And how, how does local access channels 8 and 15, 20, 25, how, where do they get their money? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll talk more specifically about channel 8 because I'm That's most fine. familiar with that. Um, TV8 is, is funded largely from um, a portion of the franchise fee that the city receives from the cable company. Currently that's Charter Communications in the city of Sheboygan. Franchise fee is um, money paid from the cable company to the municipality for use of the publicly owned right-of-way. That strip of land along the road where the cables run. The use of the, the poles and, and that sort of thing. Um, it's viewed as rent. Um, private enterprise, commercial business, using publicly owned land um, and, and its reimbursement you know, to the public uh, for use of that land. Um, again, that franchise fee is 5% of their gross receipts received on cable television. Now, now in, in more recent years, cable companies have been getting into uh, internet service and, and now even telephone service. Um, those revenues aren't included. It, it's just the um, the video service okay. uh, that that five percent applies to. Like 
that money comes into the, the general fund of the city and um, about a third of that, those monies received by the city are used for the general operating budget of Channel 8. Okay, all right. And then there's a contract between the city and charter specifying the channels that there is to be as right. part of the contract these public access channels. That, that's correct. That's yeah. part of the, the locally held franchise. And has that always pretty much been the way that it's been done? Mm -hmm. In other words, there's always been a Channel 8 as long as there's been cable TV or mm -hmm. some, yes. some form of Channel 8 and some form of, um, of public access to the, to the airwaves. For the first 15 years that um, there was cable TV in Sheboygan, um, there was a you know, Channel 8 is a public access channel, um, but for those first 15 years, the cable company provided the studio and equipment and staff and so forth. Um, well, the, the studio was within the, the charter, well, the cable company wasn't chartered at the time, but the, the cable was it office Lakeshore on, or something like that? Yeah, yeah. it was, it was uh, Lakeshore Cable, it was uh, Star, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Cable yeah. and uh, Marcus prior to becoming Charter. And you'd go down there and use their studio right. or the something? The studio was okay. right there yeah. at the, the office on Broadway Avenue and, you know. Okay, I remember that. All right. Or the old Piggly Wiggly building. For those of people who have been around for a while. <laughs> and now we're out here at UW Sheboygan in this gorgeous <clears throat> setting. Mm -hmm. Look at this beautiful set. I love this set. I mean, how many places have a fireplace? But in any event. <laughs> it's a little warm. <laughs> we think that Scott's being a good sport here today because he's usually behind the camera, and now he's in that bright glare of the, uh, of the fireplace and, uh, and can see just how much fun it is to, to be here. So um, the, um, I think it's fair to say, uh, at least at the state legislature, it's um, kind of a world upside down now for... Um, uh, cable access uh, and how Channel 8 has been doing business for all of these years. You want to tell us a little bit about there's an assembly bill and a senate bill, AB 207 and SB 107 if I'm That's not right. mistaken. Yeah. There we go. Uh, tell us what those bills are about and then uh, I think we can chew on where they're at and, and what might happen. Okay. Well essentially those bills are uh, an effort to move franchising from the local level. So rather than having a video company uh, negotiate with each community uh, one by one and, and set up, well, these are, as Cal was referring to, you know, we need um, at least one public access channel and we'd like two educational channels, one for the school district and one for the university and, and whatever the needs of that community are, um, we're, we're moving that to Madison and Charter or Time Warner or AT&T can apply for a statewide franchise and it's it's an attempt to streamline the process in in the view of the providers and, and they're the ones that have written the legislation I'll talk about that more in a minute um, but they, they feel it's burdensome to have to negotiate town by town um, these individual contracts. So they want one franchise in Madison and then they can go wherever they want in the state to provide service. I mean, okay, is Charter now, you negotiate with Sheboygan, does Charter have uh, cable service in other communities? Yes, they do. And so they have to negotiate with that community for whatever right. local access? And those are spirited negotiations, I know. I mean, I, the, the city currently has a, a committee of citizens and elected officials and so forth that I think are really chewing on the, the contract and, and so forth. Um, so those are, those are real live negotiations, I think. Right. Although they don't come up all that often. No. Um, traditionally, a, a cable franchise is for 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes it's, it's something other than that, but those are, are pretty common um, terms for that uh, contract. And it, which time it comes up for renewal and um, you know, it allows the, the city to say, okay, you know, you, you've provided service in, in you know, a good manner, but um, 
you know, technology, technology has changed or our needs have changed and, you know, we, we would like an additional channel. We've, you know, maxed out on our um, available space to, to house both public and, and government on the, the same channel. We would like to split those and have a, okay. a, a separate channel in which it, rather than, and I'm speculating here that this could happen in, in Sheboygan. Um, we get enough, you know, uh, public access programs, you know, other shows like this one um, that um, we're competing for, for time and aren't able to um, show those and all the, the city meetings. You know, there, there's been um, comments of, well, why do you just cover the Common Council and Committee of the Whole? Why, why don't we see any of the, the Council's committee meetings? Because that's, that's where the real work is done, is at the committee level. You know, all we see is the Common Council where it's consent agenda up and down and, you know, unless you have the documents in front of you and they read off, well, it's 23-12, well, what does that mean? But, right. Do, uh, do, I don't remember now, uh, I was on the council when they negotiated the first contract with Lakeshore, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Is there, it, do you recall, is there restrictions on how, on the, uh, what the cable companies can charge, uh, on an, uh, increase their charges on an annual basis, like for uh, movie channels and other kind of channels? But or the city has no, um, authority to okay. say it, it can't be more than this or that. Um, it just and, gets to 5%, that's all it could They It's 5% of the, the, the gross revenue. Um, okay. Well, tell us, if you will, what, if anything, is wrong with AB 207 and SB 107? Well, to begin with, the, the one-size-fits-all model um, really isn't good for communities. The, the needs of Sheboygan are different than the needs of Kohler or Sheboygan Falls or certainly Milwaukee or Madison or you know somewhere else in a in a more rural um, setting so to say you know we, th this one size fits all is is going to leave some wanting and hurting it might be a little lavish for others at least initially um, it so is it possible um, if, if at, at the state level, if this bill were to pass as it's, as it's proposed now, that there would be only one cable provider for the entire state, or would it countenance having two or three different kind of providers? Um, well, there, there would still be the providers that there, there are today. Mm -hmm. um, People would choose rather than the community. Well, the, the companies mention? would choose. But where I mean, they, they want to would, provide wouldn't AT and T and Charter and whoever go to the state, get their license? Then you, as a consumer, would not be bound just by Charter because they have a contract with Sheboygan. You could choose AT and T to be your provider, and over the phone line, which comes to your house already, you'd get AT and T's phone service. That would be true only if AT and T chose to provide service right. to your neighborhood in your community. Right. But they could do it because they got a license from the state. Right, right? However, now they can't. No, that's not true. Yeah, now we're getting charged up. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that's the common misconception is that because Charter has this franchise with the city, that it's somehow a monopoly. It's not an exclusive contract. If AT&T wanted to come in and provide video service, they could come in and basically take that franchise agreement, which has been negotiated in good faith between Charter and the the city and say, okay, those terms are fine with us. We're, we just want to be able to offer service too. And for that matter, Time Warner or, you know, Cal's Cable, whatever, could come in and, yeah. and, and offer competition. Mm -hmm. You just have to have the infrastructure to deliver your product. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that really has been the, the limiting factor, the pseudo monopoly, if you want to call it that, is that to to run wire through a community and, and serve every single household within you know, this <clears throat> franchise foot is incredibly expensive from a capital infrastructure standpoint. And you know, quite frankly, that's why more companies haven't um, come in. There, there are communities that have 
competition already. You know, the phone company or, or somebody has done a, an overbuild where basically you've got two sets of wires running through town. Which you do here. You have Charter and you've got AT&T basically as the old Ameritech who served this area. And that's why they've hired what, probably 15 lobbyists to get this bill passed because they're in a good position if they choose to come into Sheboygan. Sure. Well, how, do, how, do, how did Charter get a license? They get a license from the city? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the new bill, they get a license from the state. From the Cities state. are bypassed. Cities right. are bypassed. <clears throat> also, if you had a complaint, you call Charter locally, I guess, right. someplace. Call your alderman. Call your alderman, <laughs> and he'd call. The, yeah. Well, there's, there's a designated person at, at City Hall that feels those. If you, know, if you call Carter's, Charter's customer service and your complaint is not resolved, you know, in a reasonable fashion to your satisfaction, then you can, you know, call a person at City Hall and um, okay. you know, they, they can kind of go to that next level. Well, under this bill, you no longer have that local contact. You now have to call the capital Somebody and get in line behind every other person around the state who's in the same boat you are. Well, let's talk about yeah, the real, that's... the really nasty piece of this bill, um, other than at and T uh, <laughs> spending fifty-four thousand uh, dollars on uh, the, to to buy it. It should cost them more than that, is my theory. But in any event, um, what does this bill, in its current iteration, and I know there have been several substantial amendments, mm -hmm. and I have not been able to keep track of them, for us, for the Donahue Group, uh, a huge loss to the community <laughs> if we were off the air. But what um, what? effect does this have on public access, I guess, is, well, is the main thing we're as we thinking know about, it today. as we know it today. But, like you said, there, there have been several amendments. Two of the, the main uh, points affecting public access, specifically uh, TV8 and Sheboygan, that have not yet been addressed by amendments um, are the reduction and removal of a PEG fee. Um, this is a, an additional mechanism of funding um, outside of the franchise fee or in addition to the franchise fee. Um, currently in Sheboygan, it's 25 cents per subscriber per month. And it's an additional that goes towards capital improvements for the public access um, stations. That bought the fireplace then. The, well, cameras. but the fireplace was actually donated. Oh, okay. We, we, we had a very, uh, very kind benefactor the from the community. <laughs> the right. It, it's to buy new equipment, new cameras. Sure. Um, I was yeah, just as, teasing. As technology changes, you know, you really if, if you got, you know, you have to figure out over the next 10 years of a typical franchise you know, what your equipment needs are. Well, in an industry that's so reliant on technology and technology that's changing at a nearly unpredictable pace, um, that, that source of revenue is, is really vital. Um, so that would be gone under so, right. the bill? Okay. That, that would be gone under the bill. So, you know, so there's a reduction in revenue there. The other big piece that is, has yet to be addressed is what's being called upstream transmission. Um, again, currently, um, today, the, the link between our studio here and uh, Charter's head end, which is where they redistribute that signal to, to all the subscribers in the community, that, that piece of wire or that link is provided at, at no charge to the, the municipality or the, um, the PEG center. Um, it's just part of the cost of doing business for the, the video service provider. Um, in addition to the, the link from our studio, which is where most of our programming of playback and, and um, you know, shows like this one that are, are recorded at, um, we also have a link from City Hall, for example, where that enables us to carry the Common Council meetings live. Um, we, there are also links from each of the high schools, which has allowed us in this past year to do uh, the North-South basketball games live. Um, prior to the construction of the field houses, those were of course played at the Armory, which also has a, 
only, and, and there are other ones. Uh, there's one at the, um, the uh, John Michael Kohler Art Center that we use for live coverage of uh, the 4th of July parade. And uh, there's some down at Wildwood for the baseball and softball. Well, each of these links, we would have to pay or lease a line to get our signal from its origination point, whether it's at the studio or City Hall or, or any of these other uh, spots in town I just mentioned, to the provider's head end. Now, it would be true not just for our incumbent cable provider, <coughs> Charter, but also um, AT&T if they decide to. So, you know, if AT&T comes into town and is offering competition, from a PEG standpoint, that means we have to lease a line to Charter and a line to AT&T. And if a third provider comes in, then it means a third line. And in order to maintain the status quo, renting those lines, our best estimate is it would more than double our current operating budget. So, so right now our revenue has gone down under the plan. Expenses would more than double and you know, unless the city says, well, you know, this is um, important enough, it's a, it's a vital community asset, we're going to fund that, which comes out of the general fund, which raises everybody's taxes. taxes. Well, everybody's just campaigned on a, you know, zero tax increase um, city budget proposal. Well, you can't have that, and it, so it would, it would mean a cut in services. So your, your association must have amendment that will rectify yes. your supposed demise. And what, what will that amendment say or do if it's adopted? What, what we have proposed is that, you know, fine, offer, I mean, you can have competition, AT&T or whoever comes, but, you know, upstream, um, that, that path is the responsibility of the, the video provider. Um, in fact, that, that amendment has been amended itself, so that to, to make it you know more palatable, that's the way this whole process works. Um, that if that isn't amenable to whatever pr video provider, then the um, local access center can say, all right, if you're not gonna you know, share the cost or, or pick up the cost, then we're not obligated to provide our signal to you. Un well, under the unamended bill, <coughs> we would not have that option. If there is more than one provider in town, we have to provide the signal to everybody. Okay. I want to back it up just a little bit so I make sure I understand this, because this is, you know, complicated it, it business. It is very complicated. And the more complicated it is, the more likely, you know, chicanery is going to be created. Um, <coughs> under the current proposal that's being considered, the revenue to, to get a license or a friend, whether it be Charter or AT&T, the monies flow to, to, the, to the Madison coffers. Do any monies flow back to the local <laughs> municipalities or does the money stay in Madison? That's one part I'm not quite clear right. about. Right, and, and that, that's part of the reason why it, the Senate voted to send it to the Joint Finance Committee. I'm getting ahead of myself in the, the progress of where the But is my stands. understanding correct of how this works, or, um, or am I missing a piece? The, the franchise fee would <clears throat> still flow back to the municipalities. Okay. The, for, for at infinitum or for only for a certain amount of time? The for future. For, for the future. Okay. Is there um, a per capita payback, like you said, in Sheboygan is 25 cents per head? No. The, the, the franchise fee is the 5% of, of gross receipts. Okay. But how, is, <clears throat> how do you determine what each community is going to get? The number of subscribers that right. The it's company? based. It's based on the okay. the <clears throat> the subscribers of the incumbent in, incumbent cable provider um, with the most subscribers at the you know right. date specified in, okay. in the bill. Um, so you know theoretically that that franchise fee money the city right. would not lose under the current so the money would flow back mm -hmm. to the cities more or less but the the franchiser who gets the, the franchise over from Madison would be under no obligation to provide any local community with local access channels 
I mean, they wouldn't have to do that any longer if they well, didn't want to. It would be up to, say, <clears throat> Sheboygan, the city of Sheboygan, to say, we have X number of dollars and we want maybe this to continue. Right. Is the, that correct? The, the, um, and we're running out of time, so. The, the bill still um, states that the, the video provider has to provide space on the okay. channel lineup, but outside of the franchise fee, they don't have to provide any in-kind contributions or financial, okay. the, the peg mm -hmm. fee. They don't to, have to, to provide money for equipment purchases, is that right? They right. provide the channels, right. but right. they don't have to, <clears throat> somebody else pays for the equipment. I see, okay. <laughs> well, and, and just kind of wrapping up the discussion, uh, first of all, um, on April 24th, the assembly did put the bill in a form that can no longer be changed. Cal explained what that process is. It's a 55-41 vote. It appears to be a pretty Republican-Democrat split in terms of all these amendments and so forth. Um, it pretty much along party lines, certainly not it, it entirely. It was in the way the vote came down uh, for the amendments in the House on on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, the you know prior to that, this whole fast train, the the skids have been greased well on both sides of the party. AT&T mm -hmm. has spread their money around pretty well, mm -hmm. um, so it it has some bipartisan support that way. Were the corrective amendments you cited that are needed to continue what we have here, uh, were they soundly defeated or defeated in the, the assembly? Um, well, th those defeats happened along party lines. Yeah, so. 50, 46 kind of Okay, kind that's what I was wondering how close they were to victory. The bill, they wanted to get the bill pat out of the assembly. Yeah, but just, mm -hmm. to, just to, to finish up here, because we are almost out of time, uh, what is stunning is that AT&T has provided um, to date, $54,000 in contributions to legislators who are not facing elections till 2010 Next, yeah. and, and, and other sorts yeah. of things. Now, don't tell me that state government is for sale. That couldn't possibly be, but it, I guess there are some concerns that, um, that this is being fast-tracked. It's very complex, hard to follow, really, uh, but it seems like the bottom line is, is that the Donahue Group, we've been having a good time here for two yeah. years. I, I think we've been on the air two years of, in last February, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And uh, that, uh, that and other fine programming that really goes on here, and I know people do watch, may be significantly compromised. Well, the argument, the argument is uh, more choice, more choice for right? the, and at a less cost. Now, mm -hmm. that's a question that's still undecided whether it would cost less. Yeah. In other words, for the consumer at less cost, so let's so, help the consumer. Hard to say, but Scott, thanks for joining us, and sure. we hope you enjoyed this side of the camera as much as the last. <laughs>